Well, and welcome back to our database uh, segment. I'd like to introduce databases to you. We have two different databases that we use. One is a footprint only database, and one is a component that contains all of the data about a particular part number. Now, this might be the attributes that make up that part number. It might include footprints, symbols, and other data that's required for a component. I'm going to start there. We use MySQL for our database, and we divide the data into tables of different types of parts. Select capacitors, and from here we can grab a capacitor. We can view its symbology. So there's a horizontal capacitor, or we could look at a vertical capacitor, which are both in the library. Um, we can also view the physical. And just like with a footprint, we can zoom in and out and examine it in detail. We can search our database based on parameters. So it would be normal to look for capacitors with a capacitance of, say, 1,500 picofarad. Do a search, enter. All of these are 1,500 picofarad caps. If I find one I like, I can add it to my existing library. And we'll go look at that one in a minute. But it will take all of these attributes and store it with my footprint and symbols related to that um, component. I have the ability to do component revision control. So as I add components with this part number into this database, if one already exists, it's going to allow me to revision the um, component to keep track of the data that caused the revision. I can also do some neat stuff like an update. I can go grab that part number. The manufacturer or the supplier where I've got most of my data from, and I can update the part based on their current data online. This has quantity available, pricing, current description, and so forth. As part of that, typically it has a data sheet. And you can see we're searching the web to see if we can find the data sheet now. And in this case, it brings us to DigiKey and the data sheets that DigiKey has available. So a quick demonstration that we can store a, um, spec, a, a spec sheet for each component. We have a lot more capabilities built in here. But hopefully what you see is a, is a master table of where all of our parts can be stored, revision controlled, and sent to the library. When I exit, you see that we should have, maybe I didn't store that in there. I thought I stored that capacitor. Let's go back and get a cap, put it in. I'd like to show you that. All right. Um, OK. Yes, there we go. So here I have a capacitor. If I double click it, look at its attributes, you find that it has attributes from the database that will be exported to any of the CAD tools that we support. Um, and it will allow you to select which ones that you'd like to have. OK. I'd also like to show you the footprint database. It's very similar to the component database, except it's divided up by templates or part styles. So for instance, with the BGAs, I can search and look for all of my BGAs with a pin count that contains 68 pins. And perhaps, let's see if we've got one with a uh, pin pitch that contains 100. I don't know if I have one of those or not. And I don't. But I could search, again, just to prove that this works, um, for something with 68 pins, which I feel certain I have. And I have several of those. So I can go look at this part right here. And again, I can view the pattern. Uh, see, that one has two different pitches in different directions. That's an oddball for sure. Um, I can also add it to the library if I like. And when I exit, I'll find that in my library. You also will find that we have footprint revision control and 
other capabilities built into this data structure. It's a nice place to store things. It's compact. It's also something that people from all over the country can get to because it is a SQL database. And there's my other footprint, or my footprint again. Okay. So I've showed you database.